Patrick Kutcher 91, Aaron Blaze, and The Punisher. It's been a pretty incredibly bad workload week for me. I've just done almost nothing. Um, and you'll kind of see, as I started my week, like seeing some really high level dudes doing stuff, and then I was just faffing around. But you know, Monday blog, uh, I was just talking about Tumblr. Uh, what do I think of Tumblr? I think it's full of crazy people, it's the perfect place for me. I still don't think it's the perfect place for the Smiley Show. Uh, ironically, the WordPress might be the, the, pl the place to put that. Uh, it, it can be read on phones and on, on screen pretty easy. Uh, so, you know, I just got some random video from Scott Robertson who's like talking to other concept artists about, uh, you know, their sketchbooks and stuff. And, you know, I've never kept a sketchbook of this quality. And it's full of like, you know, mechanical design. And, and both of them are, are like mocking the quality of the artwork, even though it's actually quite tight. But then when I see that uh, Scott Robertson is actually like a technical illustrator of, of specific accuracy, I see why. Uh, I watched a half an hour video of him teaching how to draw in perspective uh, equidistant things. It's difficult to explain, but like this is some high level stuff, like drawing in perspective, top stuff. Uh, Aaron Blaze is uh, probably a former Disney animator. He might have explicitly said or not. Uh, works does a lot of animation of animals. Has a brilliant YouTube channel. I've just been consuming content of all week. Uh, he did this lovely. Uh, walkthrough, frame by frame walkthrough of, of uh, Snow Bear, which got me interested in what he does. And and he does speed painting as, as well. Uh, and, you know, he's got a very simple process. It's like line, it's basic color, it's basic shadows, it's highlights, and then it's textures and stuff. And it's like, it looks so simple, he does it so fast, and his results are great. Uh, it, it, it <laughs> it's breaking my balls with this. Like, um, he did a a lecture where he broke down his process in, in quite quite the large amount of detail for this kind of photorealistic uh, character concept. And you know, he just starts with this basic sketch and then it's just a layer by layer addition, nothing too complicated because he's really an, uh, a, prof uh, a traditionalist and he just uses, but, but one thing he does do when he's working digitally is just grab textures. Uh, he's got an extensive photo library of animals uh, he's collected in his life and he just grabs textures and he puts them in and then he draws on top of them to kind of integrate them into the drawing and it's you know I think now that I've seen that I'm seeing it more in the the art I, I look at um, you know he also you know just did a sketch of a ram and you know it was wrong and then he corrected it uh, several times so he's not this this guy who just gets it right first time so all, all the stuff I know is the stuff that applies so daily sketching will help um, you know, what What did I actually do this week? I started doing some random picture of a ninja. Uh, all the blue and the red is me trying to figure out different things. Blue is like the skeleton of the, the, the ninja, red is the sword, and then I kind of just like airbrushed on top of it. Um, no plan, uh, no reference. I did end up looking at reference, but that kind of made things worse. Um, basically, I, I was kind of just like, you know, I, I did the face and I was kind of happy with that. And I, I was just trying to build on top of whatever I, I did, get it wrong, go over it in white, you know, try and correct, go over it in black, just try and build things up and get a sense of, of the overall shapes. Uh, I, you know, the sword kind of has to be a little bit accurate, and then like the shoulders have dropped as I'm trying to actually figure out the, the stance. Uh, it's It's... The thing in my head doesn't quite make sense, so when I draw it, it doesn't quite make sense either, like where the sword is in, in 3D space and, and how it relates to his arm. Uh, so where I am now is I've kind of, I just redrew it and just took the head and stuck it on top. Um, you know, I have to put the sword hand back on the sword. Um, I'm not sure quite how long the sword should be, how more, how much I want it foreshortened. It's a mess, and, and I'd really be better off just doing a tight line drawing and figuring my shit out first. Uh, so the saving grace of the week, really, is I read a brilliant Punisher story uh, written by Becky Cloonan, uh, illustrated by Steve Dillon. I don't know much about Becky Cloonan, but Steve Dillon is definitely a safe pair of hands. Great, great stuff. Uh, just like Warren Ellis was here. Uh, so I was worried it might be a bit tame because I don't know if Marvel still do Marvel Max. And then the first page I open to, it's got a little girl wearing a bomb vest. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's Punisher time. 
So, yeah, I didn't need to worry about that. Uh, full of bad language, full of uh, people getting their heads blown off. It's, it's what I expect from a Punisher comic these days. And it's got a pretty pretty shady black dude in it. And then to counterbalance that, it's got a, like a, a black cop. Uh, you know, the diversity of the cast is established early on. And unfortunately, I'm acutely aware of it because of the times we live in. Uh, there's one woman, but she's a strong female lead. Uh, and, you know, the Punisher typically kills the dudes at the end. Okay. Uh, so, sorry about that. Um, yeah, they have to establish the bad guys pretty pretty outright. So this guy, you can tell he's a bad guy. He uh, takes people's faces and sticks them on his wall. It's, um, <laughs> it's the kind of people the Punisher has to deal with. It's an interesting cast because uh, this guy who kind of comes along and helps the Punisher out is a is an old friend from the war days. A uh, friend might be a stretch. Uh, they are at odds, but um, Punisher caught loose footed can't actually kill this guy. Uh, you know Steve Dillon's compositions. You know I've 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 never thought of Steve Dillon as a guy who's overtly stylish, but his work is is always very solid. And you know as I read this, I think you know what I should just learn this because it's like what he does is like it's so fundamentally sound. This would be a great place for me to, to, to go on from. So what I'm going to do next week, literally, is just try and copy the, this graphic novel page by page and see how, how far I go before I give up. <laughs> Probably won't get through the cover, right? Uh, and I'll blog about Jim Benton, my favorite illustrator f for the time being, uh, cartoonist-style illustrator, as opposed to uh, big stuff. Uh, that brings us to the end of Petra Kuchin 91, and I'll see you next time.